I really wanted the story to begin the week after the movie, where the penguin, who is completely underestimated, grabs for power in this power vacuum. I loved playing the character in the film and designing the shape of Oz's body and his costume, and the whole thing was such a team effort. To only have six to seven scenes in the film, I thought, is there any world we can do more? The way the Penguin functions in The Batman is that he's a little bit of a red herring. What I really wanted to do was build that story out, so that's really the birth of the show. Oz was not in the movie that much, so there was ripe opportunity to really explore him in a deeper way. And really get to try and understand his psychology. And so it's an extension of the Batman film. It's exploring a very different world, whereas the Batman lived in the upper echelons of the social structure of Gotham. This is down in the gutter. The world ain't set up for the honest man to succeed. That should be a beautiful story with a happy ending. But that ain't the way the world works. We get to see a different side of Gotham. Those that are really affected by the corruption of the city. To me, what was very important is this idea of the high and the low. The idea of the parts of the city that are insulated. And then the people who are struggling just day to day to get by. The Penguin is really looking at the profound corruption of Gotham. It's a kind of a dark American dream story, really. There are many gangs within Gotham and they're all vying for real estate and they're all vying for the drug trade. I thought about who should be a potential antagonist against Oz. What Matt established in the movie is that Carmine Falcone, who dies in the film, has a family. There's Alberto Falcone and there's Sofia Falcone. My father's been dead a week. You want to take what's mine? Carmine knew that Sophia was the smartest. He wanted her to really carry on the family. Dylan and I were very excited about how we could embody this rise to power of Oz in this battle of wills and who is going to come out on top. You know, Oz, people underestimate you, but not me. I've always known you were capable of more. Oz always struggled in his life. So he's savvy in some ways in relation to the cruel mathematics of how the world works. What is it you're really after, Oz? Oh, it's mine. When I first started to dissect Oz and figure out what was driving him, my realization was I think he wants to be loved and revered. To me, then, the deeper root issue would come from his mother. I wanted to write an interesting, complicated, tough-as-nails broad, and so I created Francis for that. What you did wasn't impulsive. It was instinctual. This city is meant to be yours, sweetheart. What are you going to do to get it? The morally corrupt individual that is Oz, seeking ambition in the city, that was always sort of the blueprint for the character. And inside of that was an exploration that is deep, emotional, disturbing, and also exciting in an entertainment way, much like all great gangster movies or television shows. Over the course of the show, these characters become larger than life in multiple different iterations. They are all faced with the same decisions that we all have to make. They just choose different actions that we could never choose. Oz knows the world is a cruel place and you either get to live beneath the cruelty as a victim of it or impose the cruelty on those who deserve it more than you. These characters have been through tremendous trauma and the idea about how all of that resonates against a place and that Gotham is this place where people can live these forsaken lives and it creates these lives of tremendous desperation and it creates an emotional violence that ends up spilling out into the world of that city in physical violence. I think all of that, to me, is an exciting way of taking something that is this familiar pop, iconic, mythic place, fictional place, and trying to find a way to make it relate to the real world. <laughs>